Centrifugal force is the following. Let's say we are driving in a car. Here we are driving in a car. You're sitting on the seat, holding on to the steering wheel, and you're going to turn left. You, in the car, feel like you're getting pushed to the right. Okay? You feel like there's a force to the right. Why is that? Why would that be? It's because Newton's first law says objects in motion tend to stay in motion. You, in the car, are tending to stay in motion. This is where you would like to go in a straight line. But of course, the car is moving underneath you. And so you feel like there's some force that is pushing you to the side of the car as you go around this curve. And this thing is what we call the centrifugal force. It's not a real force. It's fictitious. It is simply the fact that your underlying reference frame now changed direction. And so you feel like you moved relative to that reference frame. Really, you were going in a straight line. Okay. All right, so that's centrifugal force. So let's continue with this idea of the car moving in a circle, and let's see if we can analyze the following problem. Let's say you go to a parking lot, and you're going to drive your car in a circle, and you want to see how fast you can go in a circle and not spit out. Okay. So here's your car. You're going to go around in this circle. And you're going to do it at speed v. And we need to give the circle a radius r. And you're going to go faster and faster until you just start to skid. What is v max? That's our question. if we are given the following numbers. Okay, and let's come up with some reasonable numbers. So a car is, you know, a couple thousand pounds if it's like a sports car, which is probably about a thousand kilograms. What's a typical radius of a turn? Well, you know, a football field is 100 meters roughly in diameter. So if we did half of that, 50 meters in diameter, we could probably turn our car within the goal line to the 50-yard line. So let's say that R is 25 meters. Okay. What else do we need to know? We need to know something about the force that is holding us in this circle. So what force is actually holding us in that circle? Friction. Static friction. In that case, we need to know what mu s is. What is mu s for rubber on concrete? About. It's about one. Okay. It's about one for rubber on concrete. All right, so we're going to drive our car in a circle on the pavement, and we're going to see how fast we can go. These are the givens for the problem. This is the top view. Why don't we take a look at the side view? So the side view, the back of the car, is right there. There's the tires. And then there are some forces that are acting on this car. What forces are acting on the car? We just mentioned one of them. 
Friction. Which way is friction? In this side view, which way should I draw friction? Up, down, right, or left? Left. That's the force that's keeping us moving in the circle, right? Top view looks like this. Side view would be like this. Friction is towards the circle center. What else is acting on this car from the side view? Yes, gravity. We love gravity. If gravity's down, there's got to be something going up, which is, of course, the normal force. Okay. Looks like the side view is enough information now for us to solve this problem. So let's see if we can do it. Before we attack the math, let's take a guess. What's a good guess for how fast you could drive your car? I mean, we're, we're putting in some numbers here that seem reasonable, right? In a normal parking lot, a pretty tight radius of curvature, 1,000 kilogram car. How fast do you think you guys could do that? Just take any guess. You've probably done this before, right? When you're learning how to drive with your mom or your dad, you probably were in a parking lot going around like that. I know when I was learning to drive, my dad used to take me out on these dirt roads, and he'd say, see how fast you can take this turn, right? And so we'd go around the turn, and we'd get about halfway around the turn, and he'd pull the parking brake on me. <laughs> He'd say, I just want to see if you can control your vehicle. <laughs> awesome. Years of therapy, I'm fine now. It's OK. No problem. What's a good guess for how, long, how fast you could drive your car? Is it 100 miles per hour? No. Is it 5 miles per hour? No. So what's a good guess? Give me a guess. 45. Great. Any other guesses? No other guesses. OK, 45 sounds perfectly reasonable. When we get an answer, we got to make sure we're not off by like an order of magnitude, right? If we get 450 miles per hour, that can't be right. If we get 4.5 miles per hour, that can't be right. It's got to be somewhere within the vicinity of that, OK? All right, what do we do next? We got our picture. We've got our free body diagram, right? This is our free body right there. What do we do next? What's step three on the list? Newton's second. OK. Everybody remember step three, make her open the box. OK. mv squared over r is the important feature here. Because the sum of the forces don't add up to 0 in the radial direction. They add up to mv squared over r. What's the only force in the radial direction? It is friction. Friction is towards the center of the circle, and so it's positive. Let's put a box around that. We'll come back to it. What about N and Mg? What do we do with that? Well, why don't we look at the sum of the forces in the vertical direction? Okay, there's no reason we can't call this radial and this vertical now. It looks like we have N minus mg. What's the acceleration in the vertical direction? Zero, right? You're staying on the pavement. You don't go flying up or down. And so we get n equals mg. All right, that looks pretty good. Except we're looking for v max. And I don't think we have quite enough information now because we have this frictional force that we need to know a little bit more about. So what is static friction? Static friction, you'll remember, is this. F sub s is less than or equal to mu s times the normal force. 
So what is the maximum? F S max is just when it's equal. If we want to go as fast as possible, we're going to take advantage of the maximum static friction, right? Your tires are just about to break free and you're just about to skid out. All right, it looks like we have three equations now that we can put together. Let's take this equation right here. We've got V squared equals F sub S times R divided by M. But I know what F sub S is. It is mu S times the normal force, multiplying by R, dividing by M. And now we know exactly what the normal force is as well. And so this becomes mu S mg R divided by M. The M's cancel out. And we just get mu S G times R and then we, of course, have to take the square root. Let's make sure that this works out in terms of units. V, we know, is meters per second. G is meters per second squared. R is meters, so I get meters squared per second squared. Mu S is, of course, unitless. When I take the square root of that, I get meters per second. We like that. What about the limits? Does it make sense to you that if mu s gets bigger, you can go around this circle faster? Yeah, because you're sticking to the road more. Right? If you can stick to the road more, you can certainly go around faster. Likewise, if mu s goes way down like you're on ice, then the maximum speed would be smaller. And you know this, you can't drive around in a circle on ice nearly as fast as you can on dry cement. So all of those limits seem to make sense. And you can think about the other ones if you like, the radius and gravity. But I think you get the idea that it, it works out. So let's plug in some numbers and let's calculate what we get and see if we're even close to our guess. So V is equal to square root of mu s, which is 1, g, which is 9.8, r, we said, was 25. And I don't know what that is. It's, what is it? 15.7. And the units are meters per second. So that's pretty close to 16 meters per second. What would that be in miles per hour? Roughly double it, 32 miles per hour. So a guess of 45 is pretty good, right? We're getting an answer that is off by a little bit, right? 1.5 of that, but we're not off by a factor of 10. We're not 100 miles per hour. We're not one mile per hour, we're somewhere right in the zone. And so that seems like a good answer, 15.7 meters per second. All right, questions about that one? 